Good evening. Uh, my name is Richard Meredith. I work in the HDB Cereals and Oil Seeds team. Um, it's my honour to be your chair tonight for, for this webinar, looking at the characteristics of top performing farms. Um, if I just run you through the housekeeping uh, for the webinar tonight, uh, we are all muted, so we can't hear you or see you. You'll be glad to hear. Um, there's a question box on the right hand side of your screen. If you have any questions as we go through the webinar, uh, please, please feel free to ask them. We're going to save all the questions for for the session at the end. Um, but if you if you think of any as we go through, please feel free to send them in. Uh, we're aiming to conclude around eight o'clock. There are basis and Naroso points available. If you'd like to claim these, please write them in the the question box. I need your name, postcode, date of birth, and either the basis or Naroso number. This webinar will be recorded and added to the HDB YouTube site um, afterwards for if you want to view again and look at the slides again. Um, and if you have any feedback on, on future webinars or content that you'd like to see on these webinars, please feel free to, to let me know. Um, it's, it's your, your, your ideas help us shape this going forward. Right, without further ado, I'll, um, I'll soon hand over to tonight's speaker, Luke Crossman. Uh, Luke is my colleague at AHDB, and he's um, part of the, the market intelligence team, and he'll, he'll explain a bit about what this is, this project which he's been working on, looking at the top performing farms um, in the industry. Luke, thank you very much for joining us tonight and taking the time out. Um, at this stage, I'll, uh, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. Cheers, Richard, and even everyone. Uh, thank you again for uh, joining the webinar this evening. And uh, hopefully, there'll be elements of this that you'll find really interesting and want to take back and, and look into a bit further. So, this webinar is entitled Preparing for Change the Characteristics of Top Performing Farms. And it's based off a Horizon document that we uh, released late last year um, and it's really looking at what are the traits that those performing farms have compared to uh, others and what leads them to having the success that they do. So before we go into that in a bit of detail uh, I just want to look at the the financial side of things that the report um, threw up. So this is comparing um, basically like-for-like -like farms um, of the top performers and the bottom performers. So you can see there, there's nearly a hundred thousand pound difference in the farm business income of, 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 of these farms. So it's staggering to know uh, that there is such a difference between those. So the important thing is to kind of really evaluate, well, why is that and how can more move from that bottom end towards the top level? So we can see in some of these selected variables of what are the significantly uh, different uh, statistically different, I should say, uh, factors for um, what the, the top have compared to the bottom. Um, the report goes into a bit more detail on the financial side of things, but as I've found with my time with HDB, there's been lots of lots of talk around, well, here's the financial aspect, here's where the top guys are, here's where the bottom guys are, and it's basically a lot of just down to, well, you know, see if you can move your figures more, more towards that area. But it's not just about the financial side of it, at all, the mentality side and the the practice really leads to uh, get, uh, how the, how we can kind of put that in context to to look at the the figures and to to move the business more towards that top level or as close to it as possible. So this is the uh, document, uh, and it's actually got Richard on it himself. On there, he's on the left hand side, um, and it's like I said, really going into that mindset, the characteristics of what the, they, these farmers are doing. We did it in collaboration with Andersons and it's been quoted as having uh, something for everyone in there. It is quite a large document, which um, can be a bit off-putting. I myself don't exactly like reading through uh, lots and lots of information, but um, I'll come on to a bit more in the end what we're doing to kind of help with bite-size that, but there is elements to this that uh, hopefully will appeal to everyone and and can be kind of broken down a little bit and focused on the certain areas that uh, you may want to look at. So these are the eight key factors then that were kind of produced from the report that suggest um, this is what the top performers are doing compared to the bottom and others. So 
We'll go into these in more, day, uh, in more detail in a minute. Um, just want you to familiarize yourself with some of those. So minimizing overheads is a, is a fairly obvious one that we'll come on to. Um, comparing yourself with others uh, and gathering information, sort of benchmarking theme around there. Um, continue improvement of people management is something that does seem to get uh, kind of looked over a little bit um, and it's kind of focusing on the business itself but actually the people around the business um, whether they're you know involved in business decisions or not uh, are still key to the success of the business of a, as a whole uh, a mindset for change and innovation having that ability to kind of think of it differently than rather than doing what would be perceived as the norm or, or tradition if you like so we'll start off with minimizing overheads um, on the screen now is is a snippet from the report which looks at what farmers would give other farmers uh, in terms of advice for their tips for success and controlling costs is the number one of those high performers and improved performers and it's really looking at where a uh, product comes from for your inputs and 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 what you spend it on there compared to how maybe others are doing uh, looking at other competitors in that market um, whether or not you're getting the best deal to really control those uh, those costs and then the kind of utilization of them is are you getting the the best value for what you're buying in and how you're using it um for per hectare basis so uh, the quote from um graham redman from anderson's who who says that the uh, higher output accounts for just 10 to 30 percent of higher profits in top quartile farm businesses but lower costs contribute to 65 to 90 percent of that so it's really key even though it's a message that does get banded over and over again and i'm pretty sure a lot of people on the line now are sick of it but it fundamentally is the main thing um looking at what you can control and focusing on that rather than elements that you may have no or little control over number two is setting uh, goals and budgets um for me the figures aren't high enough in in this for for who are benchmarking budgeting and doing plans um so if you look at budgeting sort of around 40 to 43 percent of the top 25 are doing it and only um 18 percent or so of the bottom 25 are doing it and it's fundamental really to have a bit of a plan of where you're going whether it's just continuing what you're doing but putting that down on paper and kind of monitoring yourself of of uh of how your progress is is um and what things can be maybe tweaked to improve that side of things as well and maybe if you're looking to do things differently putting a budget and a goal in place uh, gives you a, a lot more of a focus than kind of thinking about doing it and then you maybe not get around to actually uh, actually jumping on the idea and cracking on with it because the day-to-day -day gets ahead so setting time aside to really kind of look at the goals and budgets and think about where you want to go with the business and, and, and how you can get there in uh, in paper terms to to help you put it down in practice. Comparing yourself with others and gathering information um, Benchmarking, a quote from um, Albert Einstein about we should not expect to achieve, achieve different results by doing the same thing. Um, it would be in, in a normal presentation, I would kind of ask the, the kind of room how many people are actually benchmarking and kind of discuss why. Obviously, very difficult to do that in this environment. But for me, benchmarking is the be all and end all, really, even if you're just looking at it compared to this year to last year and the year before with just yourself and understanding why things are different and it's easy enough to say oh the weather's been kinder this year to last year so that's why prices are where they are or this that's why yields have turned out to where they are but actually really going into the nitty-gritty of it to to see if your costs have changed massively or if there's elements of your cost as well breaking it down into all the different inputs to the business to see where the um where the potential issues are or where the potential gains have been and how you've got to that place so but benchmarking again just repeating myself is the number one thing for me to start off by doing to really assess where you are um i know there's some people get a, aren't uh, as keen on the idea of benchmarking with others as a bit of a competitive slash sensitive data issue but uh, attending discussion groups uh, talking this through with like-minded and similar businesses and similar farmers is something that um, can only benefit your business and, and yourself as a business owner. 
Um, understanding the market, um, it's not just a sense of understanding what the, maybe the futures market's doing and 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 where your grain's going, but it's it's really looking at the customers that are buying that product. Now, it's I suppose it'd be a di bit different for some of um, you guys who maybe have um, um, and buy traders who get more heavily involved and they'll just send the products wherever they they get the the right price for you um, but if you've got a contract with a supplier really understand what they're looking for and how you may be able to tweak things to get a better price from them or at least uh, make that relationship better and satisfy that but it's not just all about outputs it's knowing the input side of things as well where the product comes from um, so you can know if there's going to be any issues obviously the one of the big issues uh that we face at the moment is what's going to happen with Brexit and what's going to be decided then. There's lots of potential implications for trade on that. So really f figuring out who your suppliers are, what plans they might have in place for any uncertainty such as that and, and how that potentially could affect you. You can then use that information to adapt your budgets and your, um, and your plans to try and focus things a bit more to see, well, if if it goes that way, then what do I need to change for my business to, to make sure it's we don't get too much of a knock? Or, you know, if it's there's, there's talks of more positive movement, what's that going to mean? Uh, and how do I maybe need to, um, you know, uh, go about uh, different things to, to maybe invest, reinvest in the business if, if those successes come in? So looking at it from both sides and really understanding it as a whole, um, is crucial really to to looking for success the success not just sending products off not knowing where it comes from and just dealing with the local supplier for your inputs because you always have but really getting a grip to that is uh, is one of the key factors um, focusing on the detail now uh, don't get too bogged down with this slide it's just a visual representation of um, this factor and it's basically if you make a hundred good decisions in a row you see your um increase on return refold uh, increase uh, around 2.7 fold and if you make 100 bad decisions in a row obviously it's going to have a big negative effect now no one is going to make 100 good decisions in a row as much as people may like to think they are um, but it's really kind of assessing what decisions are being made was it the right decision if so how can you learn from that to maybe implement it in other aspects or what would, might be the knock-on effect or if it's a bad decision then how can you tweak that to make it not happen next time or turn it into a better decision than it has been a bit of analogy that might be useful for some people if uh, if they play golf on this is is a golf swing it's not just about turning up and hitting the ball it's about your grip position your hand position how you come through your backswing and then hit your, your forswing, where you're hitting the ball, what angle you've got your body at. So there's so many different little bits and pieces that if you tweak, um, you get the marginal gains from tweaking those individual aspects of it, then that's how you can get a bigger win overall. Because there is no silver bullet to changing any of this. It is fundamentally kind of really looking at the detail and trying to tweak things here and there, which give you little wins uh, as you go along, but later on will uh, add up to a much bigger, much bigger win. It's important on this as well that if you're looking to make little decisions, um, obviously what the potential knock on effect could be to other areas. Um, so it's really assessing all of that, maybe before making a decision, or sometimes there is just a case of you know, a bit of trial by error to really uh, learn from what is happening in the place. So mindset for change and innovation um, is what, uh, the sixth key point that has been uh, flagged up from the report. And it's really just a case of not just doing the same things over and over because that's how you've always done them. It's looking at what new technology is coming out, not necessarily being the first one to jump on the bandwagon, but understanding how that's been evolved over time and how that could potentially benefit your business. Um, without that ability to look at things slightly differently to what you're doing and take the blinkers off, then probably none of the others are going to be appealing because if you're not doing benchmark at the moment and it's not something you want to get into, then have if you don't have that uh, 
mindset for change, then it's just going to continue and continue and continue. Now, that's not necessarily the worst thing in the world because the business might be performing. But say a few years down the line, when things start changing around you and you're doing the same thing, you're potentially going to get left behind and then it's not going to necessarily be the most successful thing. So that ability to open up and see new ideas um, is 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 fundamental really for for any sort of change to a business and be acceptive of self-criticism um, of what you're doing and really be honest with yourself and, and get people involved with the business as well to be honest too to to delve into the that um, idea of, of how things may be able to change uh, continue improvement of people management um, now it's, it's often one that's kind of put to the wayside a little bit and undervalued really in my mind is that not it's not just about the business owner if, you, if you're on a small holding there's, there's not many of you then it might be a little bit of that but uh, whoever's working for the business might have some great ideas and if it's a case of they're just ticking along then they might be doing a fantastic job for you but are they necessarily um, overly happy in where they are have they been looking elsewhere what might the cost be for you to then recruit other people how easy is that to do so having chats with them not necessarily you know we have our bi-monthly PDRs professional development reviews where we sit down and go through various objectives and targets and bits and pieces I'm not necessarily saying that that works for every business and every person but still having a chat away from the, the kind of day to day in, an, in a bit more of an office environment or a bit more of a, a for want of a better phrase, a safe environment to talk to people a bit more to see where they want to go with their careers or where they want to go with the job um, might end up actually sparking a few more, more ideas in them, in yourself. Uh, and actually it might increase their productivity as well to, to kind of see where they're coming along and where they want to go. But it's not just necessarily about the, the management of people, it's about the management of your, yourself as well. Um, having that ability to um, self-critique of where you are and what maybe training or skills that you need to improve to help aid with some of this, um, to you know, take that um, the business and the members of staff onto that next level. And then finally, on uh, the characteristics is, is specialising, uh, working on the things you do well, working with others on the things they do well, and sharing knowledge and ideas. So it's really not not specialising in the sense that if you're um, a multi-business, you're doing cereals and you're doing maybe a bit of livestock or something like that. It's not saying just get rid of one and focus on the other. It's kind of looking at where your skills lie, where are they best? So if at the moment, say you're doing the accounts for the business and it's taking you quite a few hours and you're not really sure what, what you're doing or you're not very comfortable in doing it, then is your time spent wisely doing that? Is it actually going to be more beneficial to the business to get someone else to be doing it, whether they're in the business or whether you need to maybe pay outside of that? It might be a bit of a cost up front, but the time that it's saving you doing it could be a hell of a lot better than spending a few hours or however long it might take to do a certain task that maybe you're not the right person for and it's assessing the skill set of yourself other partners in the business and other members of staff throughout the business as well to really look at what the skill set balance is like and then how you can focus that to get the best out of the business now, one of the things to do in that is, is attending discussion groups and is speaking to other people about what sort of things they do and how you can maybe adapt some of those ideas and bring them back to your business as well. So sharing that experience and that understanding of um, different issues that you may be facing or different problems that you've overcome or just different um, things that you implement um, is, is fairly key to getting a, a, an open mind and, a, and exploring uh, that side of things a lot more to, is, to to kind of implement them back to your business because it's so much easier to kind of have a bit of a, bra a brainstorm, a bit of a discussion. That's when ideas start really flowing and that's when they can help trigger a, a thing maybe in the back of your mind or a new way of thinking uh, and then you can bring some of this um, back to back to your own business. 
so I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but um, essentially, like I said, the the main report is quite a, quite a heavy piece of work, and it's it's cross sector as well. So there's lots of information in there that may not necessarily be relevant um, to you specifically. However, uh, we do have a new focus report coming out for each sector. So the series and all seeds one. Um, again, Andersons have been uh, we've been in collaboration with them doing this, and for 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 series and analyses, it seems that the the three key elements to look at for top performing farms are setting goals and budgets, benchmarking, and having that mindset for change and innovation. Also, in that report, there's um, going to be a kind of a list of tips for consideration, and sort of um, uh, basically a bit of a a ch not a checklist, but a, a kind of list of various questions to kind of go through and and, and hope to help to stimulate that internal discussion over um, where you are where you want to go and and how maybe things need to change slightly differently if you if uh, to get there um, now when the, yeah when this comes out we'll, we'll 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 push it out and make sure it's obviously available on the website and and the through the other channels that we we currently do um, and we'll it will be, like I say, a lot more specific to series and all seeds. It will be a, a lot slimmer um, version of the publication, so it might be an easy way to get into the main publication, but there definitely is um, something for everyone in this um, if you're willing to have a look through um, and kind of see where you are and, and where you think you want to be with this. And and I can't say it enough, but it's, it's everything that kind of is around this is about being self-critical as well and really looking at yourself Kind of going well am i in a position that i think i should be and you know if not how do i want to get there and how am i going to get there so just one sort of final plug then um we've got on the on the htv website there's a whole raft of tools um, and other information relevant to characteristics um, there's lots of stuff on brexit and everything that happens with that um, there's also the the tools at the bottom so there's resilience checklist which is based on the characteristics report which gives a bit of a sort of self-assessment you can go through there answer a few questions and it takes you to um, other relevant pieces of information around the areas that you may want to develop further uh, and there's business planning on there as well which has lots of information around budgeting around um, you know, forward planning, lo uh, lots of information around that. So please visit the website. It's under uh, about HDB Brexit, as you can you can see on there. Um, but if if you're struggling to find any of this information, or if you want any more information, obviously ask questions now, or uh, feel free to get in contact with uh, myself, Richard, or anyone else at uh, at the organisation. So that's. Uh, the webinar essentially over with and it's a case of uh, over to over to questions yeah I've, if you've got any questions please write them in now i've got a couple that have come in through as we were, were doing that um first one luke is um those figures you showed at the beginning um do they include for cereal farmers do they include single farm payment uh yeah i believe they do because it's um yeah it's the farm business income um data that we get from defra Excellent. Um, someone's asked, could you could you have a go back to the the hundred the hundred things and just the hundred um, improvements and just explain a bit further what you meant by by that? So it's essentially about marginal gains. So in um, in the 2012 Olympics, the British cycling team uh, kind of the they kind of developed a bit more of this theory than there had been before about looking at all the little bits and pieces that kind of make for the overall bigger picture. So it's not just a case of, you know, just doing 100 good decisions in a row because that isn't going to happen. But it's really looking at where you can tweak things slightly differently, whether it's maybe using a little less um, pesticide or um, having a different tractor size or, or making a tractor last a bit longer or something, or little bits and pieces that maybe you haven't thought too much about before but it's really analysing going down to the bare bones of the business um, at its kind of granular level really to to assess um, 
where you currently are and if you were mm. to change things slightly differently what impact might that have now it might be a marginal impact but if you keep doing it for other elements of it it's going to add up and add up and add up so it's 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 mm. it's that kind of uh, theory another question come in if if i'm sat there i'm a farmer and i haven't and i haven't historically recorded that much and i don't feel that my my recording system is is kind of where it where it should be um you mentioned kind of doing the benchmarking and stuff but where where, where can i begin where can i kind of set off well you can begin um by well one would be jotting stuff down now um a case of where you, where you see yourself at this moment in time now hopefully you would have an idea of where you have been in the past year or so but if not there's lots of information available out there for where what have what's been happening to prices what's happening to from a both an input and output side of things so there's there's lots of information so i'd say gather that if you haven't got a, a year or two's worth of it already um historic data and then look at where things have changed and, and understand kind of where 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 you were or where the kind of average data was to a degree to where you are now mm -hmm. then look at uh, various yeah, publications as well of forecasts of what might happen in the future so you can look at it then and see well you know if if the grain if a uh, price for uh, whatever product you've got was to go up by five ten pound a ton well then what's that going to mean to your business as it sits now or mm -hmm. if your input costs are going to change um, then what's that going to mean to the business as it sits now and don't just look at it from a, you know, oh, I'm going to make this much turnover. Look at margins. Margins are the, the best key for where your business sits. Do Did you, in your work, did you see any difference in um, between the different sectors in the the income from diversification or the, or the output from diversification? Was there any kind of, um, or was it pretty much across the board? Um, that's an interesting question, really. I... I don't know off the top of my head i think it's i, I would suggest that the um less the sort of uplands beef and sheep would have a bit more diversification income but it's not something that we have gone into too much detail about because um we obviously want to focus on the farm business side of things and diversification is mm -hmm. is such a um broad topic because it's mm -hmm. very much dependent on location um you know what sort of um, uh, the tourist activity there might already be in the area and as well as that there's sort of income off farm sometimes gets attributed to diversification so if if uh, you know person a is on the farm but person b goes and works in a bank or whatever that sometimes can be classed as diversification so it is such a broad topic um, and it's not something we've necessarily gone into too much with this uh, to be honest um somebody else has asked could you elaborate a bit more on what you mean by by specializing could you go into a bit more detail about what what's your um train of thought is there yeah so with, with specializing it's 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 a case of targeting your skills and the the staff you have with you looking at who's got what sort of skill set so if you're say you're not very good on the financial side of thing but someone you work with is then get them to try and do more of the financial stuff because they'll be able to do it quicker and they'll be able to do it better than potentially you working on that um, if you've got someone that's particularly good at um it's you know even if it's something simple like cleaning the machinery if someone's better than someone else then try and make it a case that they do it more often because they'll again they'll be able to do it quicker and and better so it is really kind of looking at what skills everyone has that's associated with the business and then kind of working out where their time is spent uh, more wisely to get the most out of it because if then you if you, you find, probably find yourself working maybe slightly less hours and actually getting a more productive business mm. thank you um got a couple more here so i'm just sifting through them what what tools do the, do the HDB provide to help ensure that we're getting a fair price for our inputs? Um, well, it's a hard one because what what is a fair price? Mm. It, it, 
everyone will have their own. Yeah, everyone's going to have their own version of what a fair price is, and it's potentially going to be a bit located to them. But benchmarking is is the key to that. Is you'll be able to compare with businesses similar to yourself and other businesses as well that maybe are slightly different but still relevant in terms of what it is they're getting in, and you'll be able to compare that data to see what you're paying uh, or what's yeah what's going through your accounts compared to someone else. And then if it's dramatically different, then obviously there's going to be a potential issue there. Um, and that's a case of then would be would be looking at uh, who your supplier is, speaking to them to understand what they're doing more and shopping around. Don't you know? Don't be loyal in this. You can't be. It's got to be looking at it from a uh, a best case scenario for you. And that's what it's what it's got to be essentially. So benchmarking would be the number one starting point, uh, and then shopping around. But in terms of a, a fair price, that is just it, there's so many different answers for what a fair is. Mm. I think this will be the final question, unless any more come in. Um, what what three things could I do to prepare for change in my business? What three things could I do to prepare for change in my business? Um, Number one, understand your financial figures and from where you are at the moment and where you have previously been. Um, number two would be to almost do some sensitivity planning around that. So if if your outputs were to increase by X percent or decrease by what X percent, what impact would that have on your business? Uh, and do the same with your your outputs as well, because um, then that essentially, if you worked out what you, if you got what your margin is at the moment, then you can you can easily see well if I change things slightly different, or if you know if the industry changes, um, um, and prices suddenly go up, then you can obviously tweak that onto your accounts and then and and see what it um, what it comes out as. Mm. Uh, and number three. Um, gather as much information as possible. Really look at what um, what information there is in terms of benchmarking, in terms of market information um, from various sources as well. Like obviously the HDB, we're, we're impartial, um, independent organisation. Um, so definitely, obviously, you know, would would definitely say this. Come to us for that information mm -hmm. in the first instance, but also speak to uh, your agronomist or or your um, uh, you know your your feed merchant, uh, not feed merchant. Sorry, your uh, yeah, your fertilizer seller. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I keep saying the wrong things. But anyway, <laughs> people, people that are involved, folk, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people that are in, involved a bit more in the business as well, and, and involved in those sectors, kind of speak to them about what they think might happen, and gather as much of that information as possible to then form your own uh, uh, um, own idea around that. Um, this question from David Bowden, I can I can answer this. The question is: Is there a specific time of year to start benchmarking, or can we start any time? Um, David, you can benchmark any time of the year. Um, the most popular time of year is from November until until kind of January, February, when you start thinking about the next crop um, that's in the ground. Um, I'll send I can your your login details. I'll send you a bit more information about what you can what groups are available locally if you wanted to join a group or you can do it um, on your own. Um, Luke, another question has just come in here. Um, there are lots of opportunities for for mechanical to, to learn more about mechanical type skills in the industry. Where can farm managers find courses to cover soft skills from leadership to finance outside the world of HDB, of course? So yeah, Thomas, you mentioned there that yeah, HDB do have a number of um, of leadership and communication and, and finance courses within our skills team. Luke, do you know where 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 else would you would you go to look for that kind of kind of um, knowledge sharing? Um, well, there's there, there'll be various sort of online uh, courses around uh, business management and it, and. And I suppose a side point is important to to think about this as business management, not farm management, because mm. it's principles that apply to all successful businesses. Really, there's going to be obviously little elements of change to that, but fundamentally there'll be lots of online courses around, um, you know, how to do budgets, how to do you know projected cash flows, um, the financial stuff. There'll be there'll be lots of courses online. 
Um, there will also be uh, courses that will either be online or you'll be able to attend meetings um, where you can do like a day course around um, people management um, and you know you, you understanding your own skills there's there's there is lots of information out there that's uh that would be you know, a quick google away um i would suggest though personally in the first instance come in to talk to us and our and our skills team to see what we've got on offer uh and if we haven't got exactly what you're looking for then they can they're in a better place to kind of tailor that for you because obviously it's going to be a very individual thing but there are plenty of courses out there if you're looking to um, bolster your uh, your skills outside of what AHDB has to offer. A couple of people mentioned while you're talking there, Luke, that um, worshipful, worshipful Company of Farmers provide um, two quite prestigious um, courses, one on leadership and one on farm business management. Um, they're quite quite industry leaders in 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 that. So that's that's also another another kind of avenue you could consider. Um, that's 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 it for for questions. Um, I just want to remind you all if you do want to submit your basis on the Rosso points, um, please, please do so. Um, before I close close the webinar, I just want to give my my thanks over to Luke. Luke, thank you for giving up the time this evening to to, to walk us through through your work. Um, appreciate giving giving up giving up your evening, and um, thank you very much. Um, so, and thank thank you to all, all of you listening. Um, that's that's all from us, and um, see you soon. Cheers.